These are not the amber waves of grain that so inspired Wellesley professor Catherine Lee Bates in 1893 to pen what became America the Beautiful. By then, the nation's breadbasket had already shifted to the industrialized Midwest. This isn't quite ripe enough yet. Today, the New England grain economy is coming back. Noah Corser Kellerman's Essex Farm is part of the revival. With the Eat Local movement, there's been an increasing amount of interest in it. This is Alprilla Farm, and my wife Sophie and I have run the farm for close to a decade now. I grew up here. My grandfather purchased the farm in the 70s and raised Black Angus cattle. We raise beef cattle and we do about four acres of vegetables. In the rotation, we also grow a couple of acres of grain every year. Because we mill to order, our flour is always really fresh. When it first comes out of the mill, there's this beautiful kind of grassy aroma, um, almost like sweet corn. If you can bake with it right then, it's really, really good. So where's the flour? Each of these is an ear of wheat. Here, waiting to be harvested. Last year's supply is long gone thanks to COVID. We had about 600 pounds of unground wheat that we were intending to hold over for this fall, and it sold in a 48-hour period. We were pretty surprised. Growing grain in New England is challenging, says Kellerman. Inconsistent, wet summers can dampen a good crop. To harvest, he relies on this old combine. The reason that these really old machines are still being used is that you cannot buy new machinery that's appropriate to the scale of farming that we do. So part of grain growing is learning to enjoy working with really old technology. There's a real elegance to the design of a lot of these machines. Then there are these machines. Cedar and clay. Oxen that are more like family. We got cedar and clay when they were three days old from a dairy farm in southern New Hampshire. And we picked them up and put them in the back of our Toyota Prius. We do all of our cultivating with them. The name Alprilla comes from an old Italian expression used by Kellerman's great-grandfather. Literally, it turns, but idiomatically, it works. So Alprilla, it works. It's been working for us. It happens every morning, fresh from the oven rolls and corn muffins at Sudbury's historic Wayside Inn. If you're frequenting the grounds, you're welcome to come in and purchase muffins from us. Yeah, right at the front desk. I think they're great. I had one this morning. <laughs> There's no flour shortage here because it's milled here for use in the inn's dining room and for visitors to take home. The fresher the better, says executive chef Tyler Karpacek. The corn muffins, I can tell you that if you go to a store and buy corn muffins, that they will taste completely different from our corn muffins here. Now, is that just the cornmeal or is that our signature recipe? I think it's more so the cornmeal than anything else. Cornmeal ground the old-fashioned way in this picture-perfect landmark gristmill. Wheat for brands like Pepperidge Farm were once milled here. Recognize the logo? Jack Murphy is proud to say he was a miller. Today, he is the inn's restaurant manager and our gristmill guide. Henry Ford purchased the inn back in the 1920s and he wanted to build a colonial village here. So he wanted to build a gristmill to provide for the village and also provide energy. Additionally, we have a generator that could have been hooked up to our gristmill, built by Thomas Edison himself, that would have powered the colonial village Henry Ford wanted to build here. This was built in 1929 by him and has been operational ever since. On this day, the mill is quiet. Unfortunately, we're almost entirely dependent on the water, so Right now, for instance, we wouldn't be able to grind because there's been not a lot of rain so far this season. But we've been here before with the water wheel turning and the grindstone spinning. Visitors are invited to step inside to learn how it works. We have our doors open Wednesdays through Sunday from 9 to 5. Anyone can walk through at any point. They can even ask for a guided tour and that person will walk them around and show them specifics of the grist mill. It's just so interesting to think that they've been doing this for hundreds and thousands of years and that it really hasn't changed too, too much in that time. And it isn't every day you can get a taste of history. Every single customer we've ever had come through here always compliments the muffins. So we know that the people really do enjoy the you know, freshness of our corn muffins and our wheat rolls.
Man, do I want one of those muffins. All right, well, when the water is flowing, the grist mill can grind up to 200 pounds of flour per hour. The grindstones at the Sudbury Mill are the originals imported from France in 1929. And back to Essex, Noah harvested his grain in July and expects to mill a ton of flour this year. Up next, forget the gold rush. It was a flour rush.